a narrative question here on variances. A company has calculated a $10,000 adverse, so that's bad, isn't it? Worse for profits. So this, this variance on direct materials, so the raw materials that go into our product, is bad for profit. And they've calculated this variance by subtracting flexed budget, direct material cost, from its actual direct material cost for the period. So if you're one of the, you know, there are many ways you can do the variance calculations in this exam, but quite a lot of students like to do them by learning the formulas and take, and, and, and there are formulas around the, the variances. Um, but if you're going to work with that technique, and it can be very helpful, you need to be able to understand in a narrative question what they're getting at when they talk about some of the items that go into the formula. And so let's, before we actually do the question, let's just make sure we understand what these things mean. A flexed budget direct material cost. Flexed budget means taking the standard quantity of materials, and that has been updated for actual production levels, times by the standard price per kilogram of materials and the actual direct material cost so that is our actual quantity of materials that we've used in production because remember these variances on direct materials are always production variances and multiplying that by the actual price and that'll be the actual price per kilogram or per liter or whatever else that this is so if we're thinking about what variance this actually is, this is our total direct material variance. This includes both price and usage variances. OK, which, which two of the following factors could have caused us to have an adverse material variance? Could it be, first of all, an increase in direct material prices? Well, let's have a look at our two formulas. In one half of this, we're looking at the actual price per kilogram. And in the other half of this, we're looking at the standard price per kilogram. So if the price of materials went up an increase, would that have caused an adverse variance? Absolutely, yes, it would. If we're looking at the two parts of our formula here. So yes, that would cause it. But if we're not doing it doing, using the formulas, just think logically. If material prices went up, would that cause a, an adverse material variance? Yes, it would. So that one seems um, seems like it could, could work. How about the second one? An increase in raw material usage per unit. And what that will do is mean that in each unit, we've used more materials than we're intending to. That will mean we end up with a higher quantity of materials used, an actual quantity, compared to our flexed budget, what we should have used to make our production level for that period. So that one works as well. Oh, we're off to a flyer. Now, I do also, as well as picking out the right answers, it's great exam technique to eliminate the wrong answers too. So why are these bottom two wrong? So let's look at the first one. Units produced being greater than budgeted. Now that doesn't cause a variance, does it? Do you remember why? Ah, yes, it's this, isn't it? It's that word, flexed budget. If we make extra units, what ends up happening is the standard quantity of materials is flexed or increased to reflect the higher units produced. And so we're comparing like with like. This part of our calculation will be for the same number of units as this one. So that does not cause a variance. And how about this one down here? Units sold being greater than we were budgeting to sell. Now, that doesn't cause a material variance when we sell more than budget. That causes a sales variance. So, yes, this would cause a variance, but not for direct materials. So that's why that one is wrong. And so we're left with one and two as the correct answers.